later I am I somehow run away from, from MCDA, uh, but still keeping a connection. Uh, one of the reasons was that in MCDA it was really hard to find a goal, a clear goal, a formal goal to say whether your model is correct or not. In machine learning, the thing is much more clear. Of course, there is always a question whether the goal, the criterion we would like to optimize is the right one. So it's always a question whether to have to solve a problem exactly, uh, but with a criterion that does not um, correspond to the reality or just to have better term, let's say more fuzzy goals and to try to so and but but maybe more fitted to the to the uh, to the uh, reality but okay what we will talk today it's machine learning and something like what what I will talk will be about loss functions minimization of loss functions and to be more precise about surrogate losses but what what will be about uh, the talk I will um, shortly come uh, to that uh, in my introduction uh, my story is similar to ICAS in the sense that I gave quite a similar talk already two years ago at the same workshop, and I, but I was asked again to do something similar, but still keeping it even more basic to do something more like a tutorial. Uh, so I will try to keep the things quite, uh, at least at the beginning, quite simple, but still quite formal. And I will also repeat some elements that already appeared in the and yesterday on uh, during two presentations, one of Ikes and one of Eves. But I hope that this will be still okay for you uh, to understand all the things that I would like to present. Uh, so uh, let me also start with uh, with some uh, uh, with some uh, uh, with saying thank you to Ike and Wojtek Kotrowski. So the work I'm going up to, to present today is a result of uh, collaboration with Ike and Wojtek Kotrowski. Wojtek Kotrowski is my colleague from Poznan, who did his postdoc at, uh, in Amsterdam. And also some of the slides are coming from a lecture that we prepared with Wojtek together uh, on decision theoretic uh, machine learning. So uh, let me start with, with a ranking problem. I suppose everyone in this room is quite well aware of this problem, but we tackle from different perspectives. But let us start with a with a ranking problem and let us define it in a little bit informal way in the sense that we have set of objects and we would like to order them according to some preferences, preferences of decision maker or it's always hard to say, like I said yesterday, it's just kind of an ordering and we like the word preferences but sometimes this means a little bit too much but the main thing is just to order a set of objects. And there is a lot of applications from different teams. One of them is, for example, ranking of teams or just um, check players and so on. Uh, there is a picture of a Brazilian team. I was always a fan, and I'm still a fan of Brazilian football team. Maybe this year was not so good for my team since we were, so Brazil lost against Germany 1-7 during the World Cups. Uh, but still, I have the, the picture of the Brazilian team. Uh, there are, of course, uh, much more applications that I'm more familiar with that are coming from computer science, like informa information retrieval, and the problem is somehow uh, for a given query, uh, order the documents according to the preference of, of, a, of a user that would like to, to, to find the documents for the given query. And a similar uh, query, uh, the similar example, example was given yesterday by Ike, but uh, in his case, he was looking for Daniel Bayer, and he got a list of of documents that concern both a professor in Germany but also a, um, a football player. In my case, I'm looking for Michael Jordan and first, if I'm just looking only for Michael Jordan, I will get a list of documents that are only about the basketball player. So it's, it seems that Google does not recognize my preferences so well because nowadays what I would like to find is Michael Jordan that is a professor in machine learning and statistics in Berkeley. Therefore, I have to add something like the learning here. Or maybe the, because his story is a little bit different, maybe Google knows much more, much more about me than I expect because when I was younger, I played a lot of basketball and then Michael Jordan was the name I was looking for, so the basketball player. Of course, there are some other um, examples of 
ranking problems like protein protein interaction in the sense when I have protein I would like to order other proteins according to some similarities between those proteins. So, but now let us start to talk about the learning perspective uh, of ranking problems. So, in learning, we will have some training data. We would like to rank, uh, to build, or to learn a ranking model. And the goal or, or, the, or the criterion we would like to, um, to satisfy or optimize it's some performance measure that somehow will say whether this ranking is good or not. Uh, and this should be tested on some test data. It will be good if the learning algorithm will use the same performance measure to, to build this model. But usually those performance measures that we use in the testing are hard to optimize. So these are Mm, functions that are not convex, no differentiable, and so on. Therefore, we usually we need to facilitate the process, and therefore we look for the, some surrogate performance measures. And it will be good to find some surrogate losses that somehow behave well in the optimization, in the sense that uh, we will get in op minimizing or optimizing the surrogate, we will get close to the optimum, but also in an efficient way. And this, is, this, is, this talk will be about this problem. But since, as I said, uh, I will try to keep those things uh, as a tutorial, I will start with some basic elements, so with statistical learning theory, and also with binary classification. Then I will switch to the, to, to the general problem of learning to rank, uh, presenting some general problems, a little bit reminding the things what Ike said, but then I will focus on, two, on one problem, bipartite ranking, which is the simplest ranking problem, and show two solutions with surrogate losses and somehow compare these two elements and show that indeed we can solve a ranking problem with the, this bipartite ranking problem that seems that to be to some extent hard uh, in some efficient way from learning point of view. So let's start with the statistical learning theory and the supervised learning problem. But what I will, but I will start not exactly with a learning problem, but with the ultimate problem we have to solve. It's just a prediction problem, and it does not uh, really take the learning into account. In the sense, if there is a test example x, the x for which we have to t make a decision, we need some prediction function h that will make some prediction prediction for this x. And this function could be anything. It could be an oracle, it could be a random function, it could be an expert, it could be a function that is obtained from some interactive process, but of course this could be something that is learned from training data. Once we have this prediction, we would like to say how good is it. And sometimes we can get the supervision, the true outcome, and we can try to compare our prediction with this true value with some loss and this gives, gives us evaluation of our prediction procedure. If we will uh, repeat this process of estimation, we will estimate or we will get the risk. So if we will go to the expectation to, to, to compute the expectation of the, of the loss, so average over infinite number of test examples, we will get the risk. So as I said, this prediction function could be anything, but since I'm talking about learning, we will take some of those x's and y's, somehow obtain, maybe before we started our process, form a training data, and then use a learning algorithm. This learning algorithm will give us some model f, and then we will use some procedure that from this f will make a prediction. I'm just do this slight difference with f, a, f and h, like in multi-class classification. F could be a model that gives us conditional distribution, but then to to get a final decision, we take the class with the highest conditional probability, and looking for this arc max will be the role of h, and the probabilities will be just estimated by this f function. Just to complete this picture here, 
in learning, we need, of course, somehow evaluate whether this model is good or not. We will use this loss function. We can estimate this risk. It will be good if somehow these two risks will be similar, at least in the sense of ordering. So a small uh, risk here should somehow imply a small risk here. And this loss function is either used by learning algorithm or by this prediction function or both elements. It's in the more, um, more, more complex learning problems. Uh, uh, this distinction is quite uh, important, but here we will, uh, we will just uh, assume that rather we will use this, learn, this loss function in the learning algorithm just to minimize this loss function during learning. So just keep those things a little bit more formal. So our x is drawn from a distribution um, p. And uh, then our outcome is coming also from distribution, conditional distribution x, y. So we have something like a joint distribution of these two elements because if we will multiply those two elements, we will get this one. In learning, we always assume that there is a kind of a noise, so we have probability distributions. Of course, a deterministic case can be also uh, represented that way in the sense if we will um, just use some generate probabilities, so having only two values, one or zero, then we can also deal with a deterministic case. So we do predictions y hat with some prediction function h, and this function returns a uh, prediction for, for every input x. And of course we have this loss function, and we would like to <coughs> find a prediction function with a small loss. Uh, this could be further um, formalized to the term, uh, 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 to the to the definition of expected loss. This will be just the expectation over uh, the joint distribution of this loss function, and this is the uh, uh, the integral. Uh, so the, the 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 expected value uh, represented as the integral. So of course, optimally, what we can do, or what would we like to do? is to find the optimal, sometimes called base prediction function, denoted here as h star, which just will minimize this, uh, will minimize this uh, risk uh, given by L. And just the smallest possible risk, so this is the minimizer, and for this minimizer, the, 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 uh, we give a risk which is the smallest possible one, and this will be denoted by L star. Uh, it's sometimes more convenient with, um, to do analysis with conditional risk. So if we will fix x here, then we will have averaging only over the y. So it will be something like a conditional risk. And it's enough to find, from the analytical point of view, the optimal function for a given x. So something like a conditional function. And this will give us a kind of intuition what we should do in order to solve a learning problem. So in fact, it's more like optimization problem if the probabilities are known. This definition of the expected loss or risk uh, measures a diffi difficulty of the problems. So if we have difficult data, then we will have high base risk. And almost every age will have, will have high risk. So maybe what is better to, um, um, to analyze, it's something what is called regret. And this regret also well known in optimization as a kind of a, uh, of a, of a, of a measure that asks how close, how close the risk of H is to the risk of the uh, optimal classifier. And this could be defined this way. Of course, this is something that we cannot measure on real data, but it's convenient to use this thing in the theoretical analysis. So learning, so since these probabilities are unknown, also, therefore also the base classifier is unknown, what we have to do, we can take these training examples and try to find the good approximation of H using those uh, training examples. So we perform this usually by uh, by by procedure that is called empirical risk minimization. So instead of averaging over the whole distribution, we average over the training examples and we try to find 
this function h that minimizes this empirical risk, but usually this, from learning point of view, we have a constrained class of functions, and we try to find the optimal function uh, in this class of function with respect to the training data. Uh, and there is a lot of different algorithms, like linear function, polynomials, trees, rules, Boolean functions, like in logical analysis of data, linear combination of trees, like in boosting, and so on and so on. But what I will talk today, so the representation of H or F, so the learning model is not important. We will just talk about minimization of the losses. So this part will be uh, the loss, this loss will be the most important for us. So uh, uh, we hope to get, as I said, the function optimal in a given class. And this is usually what we do from the learning perspective. So we have something like a um, learning bias, so we restrict the class of functions. So these two values, so the optimal <coughs> function in terms of all measurable functions is a little bit different than this one. And therefore, we can say that this regret can be decomposed to two parts. The first part is the estimation error, and the second is approximation error. So this, is, this error says how far away my function, the function I learned, is far away for the optimal function in my class, and how this optimal function in my class is close to the optimal function uh, that solved this problem, so the base function. The estimation error depends on the training data, and if the size of this, or if the size of the training data will go to infinity, to some extent we can expect that we will also converge to the optimal uh, solution in the given class of functions. The approximation error depends on what we, what the, what the class of learning algorithms we choose, and also the probability distribution. So, in fact, this is the function we try to some extend, estimate, or a property of this function we would like to estimate. So this is a graph that a little bit explains the problem. So we have class of all functions, the optimal one, so this base classifier is this H star, but in learning we will use a restricted class of functions, and what the best we can do is just to find a function uh, that is the best in this class. So this will be this approximation error, and for example, if our um, learning function that we learned will be somewhere here, so this will be first the, 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 the error of, of the, the estimation error, and then we have this approximation error. Of course, this, this distance is measured in terms of these losses, yeah? so we compare the losses. And from the learning perspective, you can say that Okay, once our model complexity increases, we can decrease approximation error. But since the model complexity is harder, then we usually need more examples, or it's harder to use, to, to learn, then estimation error increases, and something, so the total prediction error, it's something like here. So it's a kind of a trade-off. We already discussed a little bit about uh, complexity of the model, expression of this model, and this learning or estimation error. So this is a graph that, that presents that. Uh, one of very important properties of loss functions or, or learning problems is calibration. And this is what the problem I started with. So I have some task clause, and this is thing that I actually would like to minimize, which is something that I can easily express or my client or decision maker can express, like saying I would like to count misclassification, so how many my classifi classifier uh, errs on some data, or how many, or like candle, candle tau, so how many uh, pairs I predicted in the wrong order. But those Task losses are hard in optimization. So we have this task loss, like 0, 1 loss in binary classification. Then we would like to use a surrogate loss, like or proxy loss. Then we will use in learning, and usually it is something 
easier to optimize. And for example, this is logistic loss and binary classification. And what we would like to get is, a, is something what is called calibration or consistency in the sense that if we minimize the surrogate loss LS, uh, this, of course, this uh, surrogate loss has to be somehow connected with this task loss, then for any sequence of functions f and any distribution, we would like the following uh, implication. Once we converge to the optimum for this surrogate loss, we would like also that the same function will converge for the optimum for our task loss. Yeah, so we will minimize a surrogate loss, but we will hope that we will solve also the problem that, or we will find the optimal solution for the task loss. And this is a property that we would like to satisfy. Equivalently, we, say some, we can say something like, when the regret in terms of the surrogate loss tends to zero, we would like that also the regret of task loss will tend to zero. And there is a, some example of, 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 uh, of this convergence uh, or this consistency. So let's say this is our landscape of our task loss. So what we would like to do is to minimize this, um, uh, this task loss. So we would like to find a function that gets the minimum value of task loss. So it will be somewhere here. Yeah? So here is the risk. There are different functions. And this is for sure a region for which we get the optimum. So our learning algorithm ideally should find one of those functions. If we will use a surrogate loss, the landscape will, will change. As we can see, it looks much nicer from optimization point of view. And if the optimum of the surrogate loss or the surrogate risk of this loss or the risk of the surrogate loss uh, will give the minimum of the risk of this um, target loss, we will say that we are calibrated. And then we have, like, let's say, the sequence of functions, and we somehow converge to this optimality. Of course, it may happen that using our surrogate loss, the optimum is not where the task loss obtains his, its minimum. Yeah? So we will be not calibrated. And for example, in binary classification, so what we use in binary classification, if we will denote our output as negative and positive classes, so minus one and one, what we can use is the zero one loss. So this is something like a Boolean test. If it's true, then it's one, otherwise it's zero. And why? So it's minus one and one. Our um, prediction function could be a scoring function, just taking the values, um, the real values, but the sign only matters. So once the sign of y and sign of f is the same, we will have a correct classification. If these are opposite, then uh, we, will we will get the negative uh, value from this product. So then we will have uh, one. So the loss will be equal to one. This could be given as a plot. So this is the plot of a loss for a given from the one example. This is this quantity sometimes called a margin. So once the sign of this product is negative, the loss is one. Here we have a kind of uh, in continuity, and then we will have a loss of zero. As we can see, the problem is not easy, or this function doesn't look so nice from the optimization point of view. So what we can do, we can try to make some relaxation, but it's also a, a typical thing what we do in optimization. There are several loss functions used in machine learning, like squared error loss, logistic loss, hinge loss, exponential loss. We don't have to check so carefully the formulas. It's better just to check the plots. So this is the zero one loss. And we see that, that all those formulas I gave before are convex functions and upper bounding the zero one loss. And once we will minimize those functions, at least we, we see that we will upper bound the Z1 loss, but maybe also we can get calibration. So maybe we can also converge to the optimal solution. 
maybe one short remark about logistic loss. It was just taking this formula. It does not give in zero exactly one, so it's it's rescaled. But this is the typical way we present uh, those uh, plots. A good news about those surrogate losses for binary classification is that all of them are calibrated. So if we will in a class, if we will choose a class uh, of function in which our optimal function is, or to say in the other way, if we will use the class of all measurable functions, then we have a kind of a guarantee that having infinite number of training examples, we will converge to the optimal solution for this U1 loss. Yes. Uh, a stronger result is this is the uh, uh, is it record bounds, and it says it says what is the convergence convergence rates for for a given uh, for a given uh, loss function. Yeah. So uh, this is the regret of our surrogate losses here for the squared loss, here for the logistic loss, here for the hinge loss, here for the exponential loss, and here is the regret of the task loss, the, 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 the loss we would really minimize. So once this goes to zero, it will also go to zero. Just examine uh, those, uh, uh, those, those bounds. It's, it may seem that, that the regret for the hinge loss is the best one, yeah? because here we have a squared, square root. Those values are rather small, close to zero. So uh, square root, it's, it's, and it's not the uh, uh, perfect uh, solution in that case. So it's better, for example, to look at that loss function. But still, comparing those, those regret bounds, it's not an easy task. So now I will just go back to the learning to rank problem. Uh, so this is already what I said. I will just uh, try to, 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 uh, to remind the most uh, important elements. So the problems in learning to rank may vary with, um, with respect to different perspectives, like the preference context, so how the preferences are, uh, are uh, the decisions are, ma um, uh, are made, the feedback information or the training information or supervision, and also the, perform the performance measure we would like to minimize. And there are a lot of different learning problems so like bipartite or multipartite or object ranking. So in this case, the context is that we have uh, training examples uh, with some supervision. And then what we would like to do is just to find uh, an order so to rank our mm, test examples. So it's not like in binary classification that we will uh, predict whether it is a positive or negative class. It's more like finding the the order in the sense that we would like to have examples from the positive um, uh, class to precede the examples from the negative class. Then we have flavor ranking. The context is a little bit different in the sense that for a given x, we will order uh, the labels. Uh, so this is something like preferences over different cars. And for example, for the x, we will, we will predict that the black Porsche is preferred over the red one, and so on, and so on. A more general context is collaborative filtering or condition ranking, where we have two types of objects. And we can also think about rankings either in columns or either in, in rows, and, and just consider that kind of a ranking problems, or just rank all the pairs in the, in the, in the, in the, in the matrix. And of course, we can also generalize this problem in the sense that uh, we will have description of those objects. So there are different types of feedback information. And this was already said by Ike, like uh, we can get utility scores. When we have utility scores, we can always get a total order. We can have ranks. And then we can get uh, also the total order. We can have partial orders. We can get pairwise comparisons. Uh, Original labels, what is quite often in the ranking problems in machine learning, and the simplest things that we get only supervision of minus one, one. I like it, I didn't like it. <coughs> Something like that. The simplest possible supervision. 
having those supervisions, we can consider a lot of different loss functions. Uh, but the formulation of those are, let's say, not nice from the optimization point of view. Therefore, we will go to find some good surrogate loss. So the most, po mm, maybe I will skip this slide because I'm running a little bit of the time. So the most uh, important or the most common loss function is something what is called either rank loss or pairwise disagreement. It is also connected with the candle tau. So once we have two objects, we have true ranks or true scorings for these objects, and then we have our predicted uh, ranks, what we would like that the order of these two will be the same. So the sign of the difference of these two will be the same. So, and there's an example, so we have two objects. Uh, the, the true values was minus and one, and our prediction is phi is three, so the order is correct, so no <coughs> error, but here we have, uh, uh, we have a kind of a pairwise in disagree disagreement in the sense that x1 seems to be predicted <coughs> as a preferred over this x2. So I will analyze this loss function in terms of uh, bipartite ranking, but just to show you that some other losses are much more complex. This is one of the performance measures used in ranking, which is called discounted cumulative gain, which doesn't look so nice. In fact, it's even easier to optimize this one than the, the one before. But there is also something what is called average precision, which is even harder to optimize, and something what is called expected reciprocal rank. And as you can see, the formulas are quite ugly. Since time is running, I will not go uh, into details of these losses. Uh, and now I will focus on the main results. Uh, also, we got about uh, surrogate losses and regret bounds for this problem. So bipartite ranking problem is the simplest one in the, in, 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 in the let's say, in the ranking, pro um, uh, in the set of the ranking problems. So the supervision are just binary lab labels, pos positive and negative labels. And we would like to sort objects in such a way that object with, uh, with the supervision plus one are ranked higher than objects with the supervision minus one. The simplest example could be something like implicit feedback in the search engines. All those documents we clicked uh, as the result. So we have a result of a query. We have a list of documents. Those documents we click got a supervision of one. All the others, the supervision of minus one. And there's an example of the, of the pairwise disagreement a measure or the rank loss that we will use or is commonly used in the bipartite ranking problem. So we will, this is our, let's say, test set. We got our ranking. So this example is ranked as the first and so on and so on. So we have an order over those examples. But this is the real values. So once the minus one um, precedes plus one, we count as one error. And in this, uh, in this example, we have four such errors. So the first one is here, the second one is here, the third one is here, and also we have this pair. So we have four mistakes that are done by our ranking procedure. So the problem we would like to solve could be also called like ranking by scoring. So we would like to find a scoring function that will give us this permutation um, over the test examples. So once we have white and black balls, we would like to apply our scoring function, sort those objects, and ideally the white balls should precede, uh, precede the black balls. And here we see different types of this ranking uh, errors. If you would like to write down the formula we would like to minimize, over the training or, mm, or test set. So we take the number of pairs, so the number of positive uh, examples and the negative. So these are the pairs we will consider. And we will take always one example from the positive class, so it will be i. j will be example from the negative class. And once the um, scoring function will be higher for the negative object, we will count 
one error, and in, in the case of a of a of a um, tie, we will say it's a it's a half error. This criterion in the case of bipartite ranking is exactly the same, or is equivalent to AUC or maximization of AUC in the sense that one minus uh, this uh, 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 empirical ranking risk is empirical AUC, so are we under rock curve? Direct minimization of this ranking risk is hard because one of again we have this boolean test, which is not nice from the optimization point of view. So there are two possible approaches. The first one will be since these losses are defined on pairs, we will define something like a pairwise surrogate losses. But still, there is another possibility that we will take univariate losses or pointwise losses. So we will not take uh, pairs in our loss function, but we will take just single objects and we will check whether this approach is the correct one. Okay, then let me start with this pairwise surrogate losses for ranking. There are two possible interpretation how to use surrogate losses. The first one, so this is just uh, rank loss for one example. And since we have this Boolean test, what we can do, we can just try to find some upper bounding uh, function of those of this Boolean test is exactly the same what we had in the binary classification problem. So we can take those problems, so we can take the same functions and just use it, use them here, or which is equivalent, just to try to reduce this problem to pairwise binary classification. So a new specific problems, and we will classify pairs of objects. Uh, doing this reduction has this um, advantage that we can, since we will end up with a binary classification problem, we can easily take the results from the regret analysis that were obtained for binary classification. Yeah, maybe with some, uh, with some caution in the sense that not, it's not so easy to, to take those results uh, in a straightforward way. So this reduction to pairwise binary classification goes in that in that way that having our data set uh, of n examples, we would like to find a scoring function. And we will define some new training set that will be of the size equal to the, to the product of the number of positive um, objects and the negative objects. And we will get a new um, classification function. And its transformation looks in that way that I will take a new example in this my in my new uh, problem will will be built from two training objects in the sense that x i comes from the positive class and x j is coming from the negative class. It's interesting all those examples in this class in this new problem will have a positive class. So we will reduce to very specific binary classification problem in which all the um, examples are positive. And our um, um, classification function still should have a kind of a structure in the sense it should satisfy that criterion. So this new function with, with tilde well, just which should be somehow like a difference between two scoring functions. Using this transformation, we can easily show that, in fact, what we have, the 0, 1 loss over this new problem, which will be represented in that way, is exactly our ranking loss. So it's a, a simple trick that we use. So we, have, we had a bipartite pri a ranking problem but we somehow reduce it to the regular classification problem, but with two specific constraints. First, all our examples are positive, and also we have a kind of a constrained class of functions that has to satisfy this uh, constraint. Having this loss function and this, this, this equivalence, we can go from empirical risk to expectation, and then, in fact, 
uh, get some results from binary classification. So having problem defined in that way, we can just use the surrogate losses we had defined in the binary classification. The problem is that we cannot use any binary classifier without modification because we have this constraint, but there are several algorithms that indeed impose this, this constraint and examples of those is SVM ranks, rank boost, and number of other approaches as well. The good thing to some extent is once we have this reduction, we can use the regular analysis from binary classification, but we have to be very careful in doing that. One thing is that we somehow, this regret analysis always for, for unbounded or not restricted class of functions. Or we can say, in other words, that our base classifier is included to the, to the, to the class of function that we consider. Since we have this constraint, this constraint given here, it's not that we can so easily take uh, uh, so easily take this record analysis, but still for some of the losses, we can show that this restriction still does not constrain the class of the optimal solution. So, so we can take some of the results to the, uh, from the binary classification. So this is a kind of a standard approach. So people started with that approach in the sense, okay, once I have, I have to minimize this rank loss, so in, always in this rank loss we have uh, pairs of objects, so the easiest thing is to think uh, in that way that, okay, I will take always a pair, and then I will classify those pairs. So to some extent we can use no concept and methods. This reduction can solve even more general ranking problems, but to some extent it gives a quadratic complexity. Some tricks for SVMs and also for ranking boosts, uh, for rank boosts are possible that make it linear. Uh, and also we need just to have make this restriction uh, that, that the, the class of function is somehow constrained by this. But the question is whether we can do it in a more efficient or in a more smart way. Since what we have to get here, it's still a function of a single element, so of a single object, so then maybe we can use a real valued classifier for ranking. And this is a point of this margin-based losses. So we will use exactly the same loss functions we used, the convex, uh, the surrogate loss function we used for binary classification, and we show that this is enough for solving the ranking problem, the bipartite ranking problem. Uh, just checking a little bit more carefully the statistical learning theory, we can get to the following result. I maybe I will skip a little bit some of the equation. So this is the expectation uh, of, the, of the ranking risk. So instead of summation over this Boolean test, we get the probabilities. Uh, of course, again, our goal is just to find, check what is the regret and to find the bounds on the regret. So using some notation and doing some transformation, what is interesting that the only thing what we need to solve a problem is to find a scoring function that is strict, which is strict monotron transformation of conditional probabilities. This eta here is just the conditional probability of a positive class for a given x. So just to solve a problem, the bipartite problem in which we have the supervision in terms of negative and positive examples, it's enough to find, we don't have really estimate the probabilities. It's enough to have any function f, any scoring function f, that is a strict monotone transformation of those uh, conditional probabilities. So therefore we can indeed uh, use the slow surrogate that we were presenting before 
Why? Because some of them, if we will check those different losses, the base classifier is usually a function of eta, so it's a optimum in x, but uh, this is already given as an eta, so the probability in x. So those are indeed monotone transformation of eta. The problem is with hinge loss, which is piecewise linear approximation of the logistic loss. We, the optimal solution here is just only a sign of a difference of conditional probability to 0 0.5. But this is quite interesting that those losses that we use for binary classification, those surrogate losses that we use for binary classification, or at least some of them, are consistent for bipartite ranking. So indeed, we reduced the problem if, again to a kind of a binary classification with surrogate losses which is cheaper in the sense that we don't have to consider all pairs of objects. We can also uh, find the regret bounds. The regret bounds uh, are a little bit more uglier. We have some very specific element here, so we have to, uh, uh, to we get such a, uh, such, a, uh, such a denominator here. P is the probability of a positive, prior pr pr probability of the of the positive class, so it, ma it makes that this, this constant could be quite uh, large. Uh, but still, there is a possibility to get rid of, those, uh, of this ugly constant if we will use something what we called weighted uh, surrogate or balanced surrogate losses. So once you will use this loss function, the surrogate loss from binary classification, but multiplied by the weight, but the weight is just one over two probability of, the, of, the, of a given class, so either positive or negative. Uh, the only small problem is that we don't know them usually, so we can try to estimate them. So to some extent, we can get rid out of it, but we get some constant that is a little bit based on some estimation problem, but a simple one because we have only to estimate one quantity from our training data, so the probability of the positive class. So just to give a short summary, uh, we solve the simplest problem. Yeah, so bipartite ranking, so we have rank loss, we had only the supervision that was positive and negative examples. If we will go for more general problems, then the problem cannot be easily solved, and this is a paper of Tucci et al. For discounted cumulative gain, this was the second loss function I presented, the story is a little bit nicer, and the reduction to regression or multi-class classification is possible with some guarantees, but for the average precision and expected reciprocal rank, it seems that so nobody uh, found a good surrogate loss, so it's still not so easy to solve the problem in terms of those losses. Just to summarize, so consistency is an important aspect of learning algorithms. So once we use some learning algorithm, we would like to have some guarantees that we will converge to the optimal solution. So weaker bounds are strong in concept in the sense that we will, we will get convergence rates to the optimal classifier. classifier. We have different settings for ranking problems. We solve this bipartite ranking problem using these two approaches. The second one, at least from theoretical point of view, seems to be uh, more interesting. It is still consistent and computationally efficient. Uh, to some extent, this result is plausible and not so surprising as many people before were using typical classifiers like logistic regression to solve bipartite ranking. There was always a question whether to use logistic regression or just to use SVM rank or rank boost. There were also some papers showing that rank boost and other boost are algebraically equivalent and so on. Uh, some of those results are give, uh, let's say, stronger results showing that indeed we can solve ranking problems or bipartite ranking problem using classification algorithms. 
So thank you for attention. Uh, I made it in time, but it's okay. <laughs>